by Mark Savage BBC Music Reporter Image Caption Kick was the band's international breakthrough album's five albums into their career, in excess had clawed their way up from Australia's pub circuit to the US top five. But no one was prepared for the success of their sixth album, Kick, a sensuous blend of funk, rock and pop that sold more than 10 million copies worldwide. Heralded by the slinky single Need You Tonight, Kick finally broke the band in the UK, and made a star of singer Michael Hutchins. Incredibly, though, their record label initially refused to release the album. According to the band's manager, Chris Murphy, he had a nail-biting encounter with Atlantic Records president Doug Morris when he first took the album to New York. He put his feet up on the desk and closed his eyes from the minute the record went on to the minute it finished, Murphy recalls in the sleeve notes for a new, deluxe edition of the record. When it stopped, he said, it'll give you a million dollars to go and record another album. Image captioned in excess in 1987 LR Tim Ferris, Michael Hutchins, Kirk Pengilly, Gary Gary Beers, Andrew Ferris, John Ferris Luckily, Wiser Heads prevailed, and Kick produced an enviable five top 40 hits in the UK Need You Tonight, New Sensation, Never Tear Us Apart, Devil Inside and Mystify. As the album turns 30, in excess keyboard player and chief writer Andrew Ferris looks back at the making of the album. Nile Rodgers helped them find the Funk Inc. started in 1977 as a plucky pub band, with Michael Hutchins joining his school friend Andrew Ferris on stage with his brothers, Tim and John. Their early singles fused the swagger of the Stones with the frenetic energy of punk but they weren't much to write home about. But by 1983, the band had become obsessed with chic star Nile Rodgers' solo album, Adventures in the Land of the Good Groove, and persuaded him to work on a they'd knocked up called Original Sin. We recorded that in New York, Ferris recalls. Niall played guitar, Daryl Hall sang backing vocals and a couple of guys from David Bowie's band put instrumental bits on it as well. No pressure image copyright Getty Images image caption Niall Rogers also worked with Madonna, Duran Duran and David Bowie in the 80s original Sin gave in excess their first number one in Australia, prompting them to pursue a fusion of pop and funk on their next album, Listen Like Thieves. The lead single from that album, What You Need, gave the band their first taste of chart success in the U.S., essentially acting as a dry run for what came next. What You Need led to us being very confident on Kick and to say, let's put this on a plaque, nail it to the wall and call it our own thing, says Ferris. Which is really what we did. Ferris and Hutchins took control of the sessions previous in excess albums had featured contributions from all six members of the band. But after the success of What You Need, Ferris informed the others that he and Michael would write all of Kick by themselves. It wasnt an aggressive thing, he says. We were on a tour bus somewhere in Europe and I said, why don't you give Michael and I a crack at doing all the tracks? The idea was that we had tended to write the singles so why don't we do all the yes and we might get more singles. And they said, yes, sure, it is like a good idea to us. He'll never forget that because, for Michael and I, feeling like we had that support was a very generous thing. Mystify could have had very different image copyright. Rex features image caption Hutchins embraced the rock and roll lifestyle and sadly died by suicide in 1997. The deluxe version of Kick contains an early version Mystify that features heavy drum loops and a very different melody and none of the finished versions appeal. Ferris says this early draft, which he recorded with Hutchins on a tour stop in Chicago, was evidence of a new way of working. On that tour we realized that, even though we had these s we'd been working on, we needed to experiment with them before we got into the studio. But we actually couldn't afford to have a huge studio of lavish gear, with people just lying around waiting for us to walk through the golden doors. So we went into demo studios, which we never normally did before that. And we were demoing things on the run we've got some time in between gigs, let's go in and fiddle around with this thing in whatever country we're in. Songs were finished in the basement of Sydney Opera Hussein XS were insistent that these new S could be played live before they were recorded so, after reconvening in Australia in late 1986, they hired out the orchestra room beneath the Sydney Opera House. I won't lie, it was really, really cool, laughs Ferris. It's this huge, iconic thing in the middle of Sydney Harbour and we just looked at it and went, yeah, let's go in there but we'd begun to get a lot more recognized at that point and there's very heavy security around that building, for obvious reasons. So it was just an awesome place to rehearse. Ferris wrote Need You Tonight in a panic. The first set of recording sessions started on the 9th of March 1987 at Sydney's Rhinoceros Studios resulting in the S. Mystify, New Sensation, Never Tears Is Apart and Devil Inside, amongst others. But the band soon realized they hadn't enough tracks to achieve their ambition of an album where every was a potential single. 
So producer Chris Thomas sent Ferris and Hutchins off to Hong Kong to write some more material. I think that was a very smart idea because it then gave us the chance to reflect on those initial recordings and work out what s we might be missing, says Ferris. Image caption need you. Tonight was the band's only number one single in the US but the band's biggest hit arrived in a flash of inspiration, just as the taxi arrived to take him to the airport I'm about to leave home when, suddenly, I started playing that riff from need you tonight, he recalls. And I thought, wow this is ridiculous, I've got to record this so I asked the cab driver to wait and he kept honking his horn and flashing his lights and shouting, we're going to miss the plane. But I made it at the last minute and I had a cassette of the recording. When I got out at the other end of the flight, I took it straight to the demo studio where Michael was waiting for me and he said, that's awesome, let me do a vocal. And the most insane thing was, he put that vocal straight down. It was crazy. Never Tear Us Apart became a standard originally written as a piano-based rockabilly, Never Tear Us Apart transformed into a grand, dramatic ballad, featuring one of Hutchins's most impassioned vocals. Unlike a lot of In Excess, which fall apart when played by another band that has become a rock standard and reality show staple. There's so many different versions I can't even remember them all, says Ferris. But there's a couple that stand out to me. Tom Jones and Natalie Ambrulia covered it as a duet, which was incredible and Joe Cocker recorded it. I was always a huge fan of his and I couldn't believe it when he did that. I was just like, wow. Kick sold by the bucket load image caption INXS's later hits included Suicide, Blonde, Beautiful Girl and Elegantly Wasted for Atlantic Records. Kick was a hard sell. In the heavily formatted world of US radio, a didnt work as a rock record, it wouldn't fit on funk stations, and pop radio was wary of harder tracks like Guns in the Sky. I think they thought Kick was from outer space, says Ferris and the album was a slow burn taking 18 months to really take off on a global scale. But it became the band's legacy, going platinum eight times in the US and being certified diamond in Canada by 1990, one in 20 Canadians owned a copy of Kick. By 1991, in excess were able to sell out Wembley Stadium and, while they had several more top 10 albums, they deliberately avoided repeating Kick's formula. Either we were really, really stupid or we just were sonic explorers, but we never went and made Kick again, says Ferris. We could have done. We knew exactly how to do it. But that's just the way in excess was. The 30th anniversary edition of Kick is out now. Follow us on Facebook, on Twitter at BBC Usents, or on Instagram at BBC Newsents. If you have a story suggestion email entertainment.news at bbc.co.uk.